Well, after that year of college, um, came home and was going to a local college back home, and, uh, for, uh, designed a little computer of my own. I designed a lot of computers, but I could never talk the local silicon companies, the local integrated circuit companies, into giving me the parts I needed to build my own computer. Um, I was a little too vague on what I needed. So anyway, I finally designed one and managed to get Signetics, I think, to give me a few parts. And it was a very tiny 8-bit computer. And what it was when it was done was it was pretty small. It had a bunch of switches on the front and a bunch of lights, just like mini computers. And it had an instruction set of my own design. And what you would do to load a first program into it, let's say you wanted to load a program in that was 20 bytes long. You would toggle the code for one of the bytes on the switches. There were no such things as video terminals back in 1970. There were no such things as affordable teletypes. And I had no money at all. I had to, to use what I could beg and borrow. So there was, the only input device was these switches. And you'd toggle a code on them, one byte, and push a button, and the byte would go into memory where you wanted it to. You'd toggle another code, push a button, and that byte goes into memory. And you could load a little 20-byte program into memory. Maybe it did some little tricky thing like a multiply. And you could push another button, and it would run. And you could actually watch it work. And, and it turns out that it didn't matter that it did nothing useful. It did only something that, you, that I knew this was a computer. That was the only thing that matters. All the rewards of computers were intrinsic. It didn't have to accomplish something to the outside world. It didn't have to earn money. It didn't have to start a company. It didn't have to get a, a, a career or get a job. <coughs> it was a computer, and I was uh, very proud of that. The trouble is, after it was done, you sort of think, well, what can I do beyond this? What can I do next? And the ideas that came into my head and a friend that was working on it with me were, you can add a keyboard, number one. And I started thinking, what's the only, I had no money. You got no money, what sort of in output device can you possibly get? You cannot afford a teletype to print answers out. And there were, the video terminals were not around yet. Well, I started thinking and I finally figured out that I knew how to build a little circuit that could, if I attached it to my oscilloscope, I, I could always borrow an oscilloscope, and it had x, y coordinates. And I could just draw that trace over and start drawing characters. So I started designing a circuit that would print numbers, numbers only, onto an oscilloscope screen, but never got around to building it. It was an important stage to go through in 1970. The rest of the world was going to go through that stage in 1975.